Thank you for signing up to attend and participate in this conference. Please stand by as we are about to start in a few moments. As we go through the program, may we request our participants to rename into your institution's initials and your name to facilitate recognition. Kindly mute your microphone audio and turn off your video while the webinar sessions and lectures are ongoing to save on data and to avoid disturbing the program flow. For your questions and comments during the sessions, kindly use the chat box and reaction buttons as applicable. As we are to start recording soon, you may use the chat box to write your short greetings to your fellow participants. This will also help us in checking for your attendance later. To help us prepare for this event, please join us in the opening prayer to be followed by the Philippine National Anthem. Let us always remember that God is always with us, guiding us, protecting us, taking care of us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we praise and thank you for all the blessings you have continuously showered upon us. Unworthy as we are, through your kindness, you have blessed us. For the gift of life, the gift of family, the gift of friendship, we praise and we thank you, Lord. Lord, we lift up to you our activity for today. We lift up to you, everyone. PASCOM, officers and members, guests, yes. and especially the speakers, that we may be able to help one another in our quest to help our students, our community, our country. All these for your greater glory and honor. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. PASCOM, or the Philippine Academic Society of Community Medicine, is now the Philippine Academic Society of Social and Community Medicine Incorporated. It is a SEC registered nonprofit academic medical organization in preventive, social, and community medicine education and an affiliate of the Association of Philippine Medical Colleges. PASCOM aims to be the premier organization in preventive, social, and community medicine education, facilitating advancement of the optimal health of the nation, advocating accessible holistic care and equitable delivery of services, promoting relevant research and professional development. PASCOM is committed to the pursuit of the advancement of the discipline and practice of preventive, social, and community medicine among faculty and learners. It aims to uphold social accountability and people empowerment, as well as foster nationalism and ensure moral, ethical, and spiritual values in enhancing academic growth and welfare of its members.
to welcome us to the program is the president of the Philippine Academic Society of Social and Community Medicine, Dr. Cherry Bernardo Lazaro. Ayan, good afternoon po sa lahat sa inyo at maraming salamat po sa pagdalo. Kahit na siguro holiday ngayon ay dumating kayo so I didn't expect na medyo marami-rami tayo and I think 40 plus is a good volume or good number of audience for this afternoon. So um, maybe just to informally open the simple learning activity, I want to greet you all na magandang afternoon po, magandang hapon po sa lahat at salamat sa pagdalo. Now, ang ginawa ko po, ginawa po title namin sa afternoon na ito ay yung Puso sa Puso sa Health Promotion. It's the FASCOM's post-Valentine's Day special. At dahil, di ba, napapag-usapan din lang ang Valentine's at puso, maybe gusto ko lang po siguro bilang icebreaker na rin at para medyo maingganyo tayo makipag-usap sa isa't isa today and later, eh, meron lang ang short um, intro. But bago yan, ito po ang learning outcomes ng ating simple learning activity. So basically, sa ating program, we hope that at the end of this, you can explain some basic concepts on health promotion and analyze the DOH health promotion framework strategy in relation to the basic concepts of health promotion. But bago yan, medyo konting informal balitaktakan lang tayo. So napapag-usapan ang Valentine's, tanong ko lang, saan kayo nag-Valentine's? Dapat sana tatanong ko, saan at ano ginawa niya nung Valentine's. Um, pero siguro saan na lang muna. So, um, medyo ba day ba tanong, pero may, maybe just to break the ice, palagay lang po sa chat box ang inyong sagot. Um, siguro para matulungan ako sa discussion na ito, eh, mali na discussion or intro na ito, ay tatawagin ko pa ang moderator sa afternoon na ito, si Dr. Bien Elinilos ang ating Visayas Regional Representative. Hello, Bien. <laughs> Hello, Doc. Magandang hapon. Magandang hapon sa lahat. Good afternoon, everyone. Ayan. So, at tanong ko sa kanila at sa'yo na rin, saan kayo ng Valentine's Day? Ayan. So, ako kasi sa daan. Tapos, um, tinulungan ko mag-round sa aking asawa kasi usually I um, avoid man nila pag, pag Valentine's kasi it's all, all very traffic there. At na-realize ko na lang ng Valentine's nung kumakain kami sa karindiriya ng breakfast. Binigyan ako ng sa, ano, apat na saging saba. Tapos binati kami ng Happy Valentine's. Doon ko lang nalaman. So ako sa daan. Ikaw, Bien, saan ka nag-Valentine's? Actually, sa bahay lang. Kasi I, I live far from my <coughs> my family, my wife. My wife's in Bacolod. Nandito ako sa Manila. So technically, nag-Valentine's Day kami sa cyberspace. Oh, diba? FaceTime face lang. Tutuluto sa bahay. I had my own meal. Ayan, luto. Maraming, maraming tulad mo na ano ha, sa, sa bahay lang. Ayan, sa bahay, natulog. Bahay. Pero sa clinic, grabe talaga, no? Oo, yung iba na, yes, iba siyempre, na clinic pa din. Meron sa bahay kasi nagkasakit po. Ayan, sana si magali na siya ngayon. Si iba Doc Nick, si Doc Nick, napaka-general sa Dabao. Nasaan <laughs> sa Dabao to? <laughs> Sa Dabao. Hindi ang, kasi... Ta ang lawak na yan ang Dabao. Oo. Kasi taga Isabela siya. So, pumunta <laughs> siya sa Dabao din. So, ayun, ayun. Ayun. Valentine's. Ayan. Naka-online class at nagda-dry run ng clinical clerk. So, iba sa atin. Nag-classy pa talaga, di ba? Nung Valentine's. Ayan. So, si Negi kasi nandun ata. Ang ah. So, that's nice. Mom, ayan. Mukhang that's maraming nice. nasa bahay. At sana nandito na sa bahay na rin kayo ngayon. Safe at nakikinig sa amen. So, ayan ang kanilang Valentine's. Now, nung tinitle natin tong programa, Valentine's na sa isip natin kasi puso to, sa puso sa health promotion. Um siguro medyo nakaligtaan ko lang din kasi given the date, it was indefinite then that it would fall under uh, national declared holiday celebration. And although, di ba, tomorrow pa talaga yung dapat holiday na siguro biglang naalala na, uy, may holiday pala. Di ba? Siguro may gusto lang tayo ma-commemorate. Sa, masus sa masusunod pong picture sa papakita ko, eh, lagay nyo sa chat box kung naalala nyo kung ano yung managanap, saan, at ano yung naganap sa mga picture na ito. Okay, unang picture, ito, saan iyan? Or kung ano yung event sa picture na yan, naalala nyo po. 
Mukhang marami nang nakalimot dyan. Oo. Oh, oh. so, ayan, may sagot yan. <laughs> ayan, so naalala pa nila, I think this is somewhere in Bonnie, Bonnie Avenue. And eto, di ba, muntik na tumalimutan i-celebrate. So buti na lang, kaya biglaan ang ating holiday today. But tomorrow pa talaga sinis-celebrate ang EDSA Revolution. But gaya na mga post ni Bien, ang EDSA Revolution, hindi lang siya nangyari ng isang araw. I was nine years old, I think, when EDSA Revolution happened. And I know may election na nangyari. Tapos para may ayaw pumayag do sa results ng election and and all. So, sana po tomorrow um, we could commemorate, di ba? Balikan natin ang history. Maybe starting today and tonight, we can go back to history. Kasi napaka-importante po itong um, ganap ng sa history ng ating bansa. Um, sadly, di ba sabi, it was a, um, it's a, it's a milestone that it returns the democracy of the country. But sadly, um, I'm not sure how is that democracy or freedom going on at this time. Okay, next picture. What is this? O saan ito? Kung yung una si Edsa, <clears throat> ito po. It, 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 transla it translate na lang yung French doon sa taas. Oh. <laughs> Ayan, diba? so, ayan, so... Yung mga clues and cues. Oo, hindi kasi kami nagpe-French. Konti <laughs> <laughs> lang ako sa panayol, kaya, pero ayan, kaya. Well, ayan, so... Okay, okay, may mga sumasagot ba? Ayan, may isa ako nakita. Alma ata, di ba, sa... sa Kazakhstan. So, yeah. ito po yung Alma Ata Declaration of 1978. So, Alma Ata Declaration which identified primary health care as the key attainment to the goal of health for all. Ito po napaka-landmark um, pangyayari rin sa kasaysayan ng, ng health. Sa primary yeah. health care natin, ina-anchor, di ba? Yan ang ating mga yeah. principles na itinaglalaban sa PASCOM kasama na dyan. Yes. Health, health equity, Um, social justice. So, Jan. At given itong um, milestone na ito, major milestone sa health, ito, kumapit din dito ang isa pang major milestone. Okay. So, wala akong makitang picture except for this emblem. They call it an emblem. And what does this emblem remind you of? What place? Ayan. So, may nakasagot agad. So, Si Ottawa, si Ottawa Charter. Saan ba si Ottawa? Anong, anong country si Ottawa? Naalhala niyo. Canada. Ayan. Yeah. <laughs> Oo, alam mo dati, kala ko si Ottawa sa Japan. So... <laughs> <laughs> Para sounds like Okinawa. Ganun na yeah, yun. Yung, oh, yung mga ganun. Until I got to Canada. So, sabi ko, ah, dito pala yung ano. Yung Ottawa oh. Charter. So, si Ottawa, it's... derived din siya from ano from take off siya it was built from the progress of Alma Ata declaration so it's the it's an international agreement signed at the first international conference on health promote organized by the world health organization so so ito siya the Ottawa Charter for Health Promotions pero bago po tayo pumunta doon eh tanong ko muna po ano po pumapasok sa isip natin When we say health promotion, so pwede pong ano bang activities, anong programs, ang naiisip natin. Short answers lang po ah, pag sinabi pong health promotion. Lega, huwag pong mahiya. Ayan, so isa na IEC. Ayan, IEC materials. Anybody else? IEC stands for Information, Education, and Communication Materials. Teaching Prevention. Yes. Huwag po masyay. Ayan. Um, community programs. Yes. Um, meron pa po bang nasa isip? Huwag po tayo masyay. Ayan. So medyo, baka nahihiya pa yung iba. So yung mga IEC materials, teaching prevention, community programs, nandyan yan. Kasama yan sa health promotion. Pero siguro before natin sabihin kung mal, um Mabanggit yan, kasama na rin po dyan ang health lectures, mother's class. But we can't define health promotion without going back to what the definition, or to the definition of health, which is the state of complete physical, 
mental and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease. And sinasabi nga ang health is um, a resource for everyday life. It shouldn't be our objective of living. Medyo malalim, no? Kailangan natin siya para mabuhay everyday, para magawa ang ating kailangan. Pero sana hindi siya yung, yung purpose lang natin, na, di ba? Parang, although at some point, di ba, pag nagkakasakit tayo, minsan gusto natin mabuhay. Gusto natin maging malusog para mabuhay tayo. It's also a positive concept emphasizing social and personal resources as well as physical capabilities. Kung kaya, given this definition, sinasabi na ang health promotion is defined as the process of enabling people to increase control over and to improve their health. Hmm. Medyo parang broad yung definition. And sinasabi rin, to reach a state of complete physical, mental, social well-being, an individual or group must identify, must be able to identify, to realize aspirations, to satisfy needs, and to change or cope with the environment. So that's based on the, uh, the Ottawa Charter. So sinasabi ng health promotion is not just the responsibility of the health sector, but goes beyond healthy lifestyles to well-being. Now, kanina, nung pinapabanggit ko sa inyo, nasa isip nyo pag health promotion, hindi natin, hindi nawawala ang mga health education activities. Most of the time, there's that concept na health promotion is equal to health education activities. When, but when I started lecturing about health promotion, I realized that health education is just one of the categories or just one of the activities by which we do health promotion. Because health promotion regards the prerequisites for health. That you have to have the improvement in health requires a secure foundation in these basic prerequisites. And what are those? Peace, shelter, education, food income, a stable ecosystem, sustainable resources, social justice, and equity. So parang hindi mawawala sa usapan ng health promotion, ang tinatawag natin, social determinants of health. And so going back to the Ottawa Charter, ang ganda sa Ottawa Charter, ay sinasabi niya rin, ano yung mga dapat gawin, which are ano yung mga five action areas na dapat gawin in order to do to do health promotion, like building healthy public policies that would enable or make it easier for people to make healthy choices, create environment or supportive environment kasi hindi lang nabubuhay ang tao sa kanilang mga bahay, sa kanilang mga pamilya, but we are connected to our environment. Strengthen community action, so to empower our communities to take care of their health. Dito tayo pumapasok as PASCOM. Kasama na dyan and develop personal skills and knowledge for people to be more capable of taking care of their health. So dito po papasok yung mga capacity building natin. And reorient health services towards health promotion, not just, di ba, kasi ang emphasis pa na yung nasa good side. So hopefully, ma-reorient towards health promoting side. And the Ottawa Charter also had the three strategies, meaning the, which includes advocate, enable, and mediate. So advocate for Advocate for health or conditions favorable to health, enable people to achieve their fullest health potential, and mediate between different interests in society in the pursuit of health. Okay, I know this is too much, and hindi ko siya ididetalye, kasi malamang sasabihin din siya ng ating, or babanggitin din siya at babalikan ng ating speaker for today. And siguro ang mas importanting tanong din as we go through the discussion later is, Paano ginagawa ang mga action areas na to at strategies na to sa ating bansa at sa ating setting? So, that's basically it for the basic concepts. Ako pa siguro aside from the, the definition of health promotion and um, health promotion in the Ottawa Charter, I teach health promotion in the concept, context of teaching students how to make your the IEC materials and as well as um, applying design thinking in, in them doing those IEC materials. So that's for learning outcomes number one. Check. Now, we're, we'll be proceeding to the next learning outcome, which is analyze the DOH health promotion framework. And thus, we are moving on to the next part or the main part of our program, which is the lecture on the DOH health promotion framework strategy. And 
Bien, can you help me introduce our speaker for today? Yes, Dr. Cherry. But before that, of course, thanks for that mini lecture no, on health promotions. Uh, that sets the stage for the conversation this afternoon, especially with our invited speaker. Uh, our speaker for this afternoon led the program uh, management and capacity development and now currently leads the behavior change and social mobilization for the DOH Health Promotion Bureau. And since 2021, uh, the HPB, the same bureau, led the COVID vaccines demand generation and communications as part of the National Vaccination Operation Center. But uh, before our speaker joined the Department of Health in 2020, he actually served for four years in Northern Samar and was chief of hospital at the Dr. Gregorio B. Tan Memorial Hospital. So our speaker also holds an MD and MBA uh, degrees from Ateneo School of Medicine and Public Health and is actually part of the inaugural cohort of the Obama Foundation's Leaders for Asia Pacific in 2019. So my colleagues, let us all welcome our speaker for this afternoon, Dr. Alfonso Fonsi Regala. Dr. Fonsi, we welcome you to our afternoon's activity. Please take it away, Dr. Fonsi. Okay. So habang pinapa-turn on, hello Fonsi, habang pinapa-turn on ko kay Fonsi ang kanyang video. Sana nandyan siya. Baka lang nag-exit ng contest. Ayan, nandyan yeah. si Fonsi. Okay, Fonsi, habang, habang nire-ready na yung slide, para din makita po niya kayo, okay lang po ba na, I'm sorry. Ayan, mag, pwede po bang deeply mag- magpa-picture muna po kami sa inyo. Okay lang ba? Para makita rin po ni Dr. Fonsi ng ating speaker ang inyong faces. Ayan. Yeah. Okay. Yun. Um, okay. Hab habang fresh pang lahat. Habang fresh pa daw ang lahat. Ayan. So, good afternoon po. Ayan, nakikita ko ang aking mga exerciser, si Sir Dr. Hobes. <laughs> Sorry, special mention. Okay, sige, magpipicture ako ah, kasi ang aking mga kasama karamihan mobile. Okay, um, tatlong frames po ito. Um, may kasama ba ako dito? Mary, well, kaya mo magpicture? Yes, Doc. I'm taking uh Oo, -oh. kasi medyo. Alright, sige. Mary, ano, hudyatan mo lang kami. Kaya ba? Ay, sige. <laughs> Naka-mute ka, Mary. Medyo malayan po sa akin. Um, smile po. One, two, smile. Okay, second. Hold on po ha. At medyo marami-rami itong... Okay, smile uh, po. Wait lang. Mokchito. Smile ka dyan. <laughs> Yeah, special mention. I'm having bouts of vertigo. <laughs> Mahirap na tumatan. Mm -hmm. Hindi pa, hindi pa naka-on cam. Okay na po. Sige. Kahit picture na lang. Wait yes, lang. Sir. Okay. Thank Ayan. you po. Thank you so much. Ayan. Thank you, Doc Mary. Ayan. Doc Fonsi, take it away. Ayan, you can okay, share Doc your Fonsi, slides. Doc Fonsi, you can share your slides po. Hold on yan pa. Ayan. Magandang hapon po sa lahat. Kikita na po ba? Hindi pa, naglaload pa lang. Abang inaantay natin yung slides sa Doc Fonsi. Just to remind everybody, if you have some questions later on, you can actually start typing them sa chat box natin. So that uh, during the Q&A, we can acknowledge your questions. Na. So don't don't hesitate to leave any comments or questions in the chat box. 
even uh, while the lecture is ongoing. Fonsi, gusto mong i-stop muna tapos i-try mong mag-advance screen share tos advance na lang para portion of the screen. Hindi rin pa. Thank you. Hindi ko rin kasi pasensya na low tech rin ako niya. Yung marunong masyado. Ayan. So, sabi nga, kung may tanong kayo, or minsan may expectation kayong tanongin, ayan, pwede nyo nang itanong ngayon. Um, gusto ko lang po i-welcome ang ating mga kasama dito ngayon. Maraming institutions ang nandito ngayon. Um, sa mga studenting nandyan, pwedeng bumati sa chat box kasi baka nandito ang ating yung teacher at pinapanood kayo. Ayan. Ayan, Ayan, there, Fonsi. Very good. <laughs> Sige, maraming salamat. Thank you po for uh, inviting me. Uh, it's an honor po to be able to share uh, our work in the DOH for Health Promotion. Um, as mentioned po, na dati po akong nasa ospital at sa totoo rin po nung nasa ospital ako, uh, napakadaling makalimutan kasi sobrang busy ng clinical services. Nakakaligtaan din po yung health promotion. And even then, at that time, ang konsepto ko po ng health promotion ay uh, IEC. Yung mga nabanggit din natin kanina. Pero mas malawak pa rin po pala doon ang kabuuan ng health promotion. So how do we make the healthy choice the easier choice? For this presentation, uh, I just want to answer three things. Why? Uh, why do we need to invest in health promotion? Second, what, what do we do and discuss the health promotion framework strategy and its alignment with fundamental concepts? And lastly, how? How do we implement this health promotion and how do we uh, work with the different sectors uh, for uh, health? Um, ako, nagsimula po kami noong 2020 noong naisa batas at na-implement ang pagbuo ng Health Promotion Bureau. Ang tanong po namin, what makes Filipinos healthy? And we found out that medical care only accounts for 20% of health outcomes. While 80% of the health outcomes can be attributed to the social determinants of health. 50% actually can be traced back to the place where you are, no? to your zip code, no? to our settings. And so this is why investing in health promotion is important because it allows us to respond to 80% of what determines health outcomes. That means uh, protecting and enabling Filipinos to care for themselves and the community and the settings they are in, their communities, their schools, and their workplaces and also taking care of them uh, when they need uh, healthcare services in our conventional uh, health facilities. The first one relies on uh, different sectors and not just the health sector alone. As mentioned by Dr. Cherry po kanina, uh, we want to have the same uh, baselines. Uh, for health promotion, it is the process of enabling people to increase control over and to improve their health and its determinants. So we want everyone, regardless of who, where, or what time of day it is, to have power over the way their health goes and have power over what influences their health as well. And when we say health, yes, it is the state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. One of our questions then also uh, was, uh, why do people of often associate uh, health with their experience just of uh, healthcare facilities? Pagka may sakit, bakit hindi ganun ka nakatatap yung experience pagka ikaw ay may magandang or mahus, ay no, pag malusog ka, no? ano yung naririnig mo, ano yung nakikita mo, Ani nararamdaman mo when you are healthy. And when we talk about the state of complete well-being, uh, we cannot ignore the impact of the social determinants of health because these are the non-medical factors and conditions 
where people are born, where they grow, work, live, and age that influence health outcomes. This is important because uh, the place and the setting you are born in has its own inherent uh, uh, characteristics that can either reinforce persistent and widening gaps or allow you to overcome them. And these gaps are most pronounced between those with, uh, with the best and worst health and well-being. This is unfair, this is unjust, and this is avoidable. Through health promotion, we can create social and physical environments that promote good health for all. Um, e equality sounds fair, but equity is fair. Doc Cherry mentioned the Ottawa Charter of, for Health Promotion. So, hindi po bago itong health promotion. Dati na po ito. No? So, the Ottawa Charter has been in place since uh, 1986 and it outlines the basic principles and actions for health promotion. It also outlines nine prerequisites for health to reach a state of the complete physical, mental, and social being. This show that the health promotion is not just the responsibility of the health sector. It also goes beyond knowing what would keep you healthy. It goes beyond healthy lifestyles. Health holistic well-being across all these domains is important for health. So there are five action areas uh, outlined by the Ottawa Charter. Uh, we'll go through them one by one. First is building healthy public policy. Uh, this means that uh, the process of developing policy support health, not just by protecting the communities, but also making it easier for them to make the healthy choice. So it includes diff different policy instruments from legislation, fiscal measures, taxation, even organizational change. But we need the mandate of policy to be able to do all of these things. It shows that health should be at the agenda of policymakers in all sectors and at all levels. Hindi lang po yung ating mga local health offices, mga barangay health center, mga hospital, at local health boards ang may toka sa ating kalusugan. Lahat po dapat. Second is creating supportive environments. No? It focuses on places or what we call uh, the settings where people live, work, learn, and play. And while we create and design our environments for healthier behavior, it also has this reciprocal responsibility of taking care of our physical environments for future generations. This way, we can sustain the ability of people to make healthy choices, not just now, but also in the future. So when we say designing healthier behaviors, what do we mean? Uh, these supportive examples include the um, creation of bike lanes and protected uh, pedestrian walking paths. No? Um, if we could provide an option for people where exercise is not a choice, it's an instinct. If it's cheaper to exercise going to work, if it's faster to exercise going to work, We've seen since the pandemic that people will choose to do it. Third is strengthening community action. So this pertains to the collective actions of the community to improve their health. And mind you, it's not just as beneficiaries, but as partners in setting priorities, in identifying the problem itself, uh, making the decisions, planning strategies and implementing them to achieve uh, better health. So some of key activities here include enhancing self-help and social support and developing flexible systems to strengthen the public's participation. The fourth action area is developing personal skills. No? It focuses on in on personal and social development by increasing options available to exercise the control over their health. 
And enabling people means enabling them to learn continuously throughout their lives and prepare themselves for all life stages to cope with chronic illnesses and injuries and to mitigate the impacts of this no, in individuals. Yes, this includes our information, education, but also life skills. Uh, when we were tackling mental health, uh, there was a significant encounter in one of our father's groups. Um, we asked them, how, how do you cope with it? Uh, there was a lot of um, feelings and a lot of frustration over just the lack of language, not knowing how to talk about these things. So uh, skills also encompass uh, those no? life skills for communication. The fifth action area is reorienting health uh, services. It aims to put equal focus no? on supporting the needs of the people and communities by expanding beyond the responsibilities of therapeutic services and rehabilitative services, which is traditionally, uh, mas malaki po talaga yung, yung investments. So it's either we give equal emphasis, equal priorities, and equal investments in this to be able to achieve um, the goals of uh, universal healthcare, not just health promotion. So preventive and promotive health services across the spectrum must have equal emphasis as our therapeutic and rehabilitative services. So that's for the Ottawa Charter. Another important uh, document for us uh, as Foundations for Health Promotion was actually the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action. So this was nine years after the Ottawa Charter. Um, it highlights 12 action areas specifically for the global realization of equality and women's empowerment. But it also mentions that women's inability to obtain health services reflects weaknesses that cannot be rectified just by aiming interventions for women alone. So how is this important for health promotion? Well, one, the health promotion and disease prevention interventions uh, could help vulnerable groups which have more difficult access to conventional healthcare services. But what is it highlights is that we need to look at population-based services that serve not just specific groups, but all of these marginalized and vulnerable groups. It entails more resources. It puts that at the forefront and at the priorities of um, health systems. The third important concept uh, for us um, is actually the people in places framework. So when we talk about health promotion, at the end of the day, we want people to be able to change or to do healthier behaviors. And to do this, we must take into consideration attributes of individual people. Uh, and this mean uh, the knowledge and beliefs or attitudes and skills, the interpersonal um, interpersonal relationships that either perpetuate, uh, enable, or prevent healthier behaviors, and at the community level, how the social dynamics um, can make these norms, traditions, culture, or otherwise undesirable behaviors. I think one clear example of this is, is vaccination. Uh, a person who is individually motivated can be affected by the people around him or her. And that's just talking about the people's attribute, attributes. No? We also need to take into consideration the attributes of the place. So this means looking at uh, it from a more macro level, no? at the institutional level. What are the laws and policies? on enforcement? What are resources that we provide them? Um, do we provide them um, literacy materials? But is it in their dialect? If they cannot read, um, is it still understandable? That availability of information and how media portrays certain health uh, um, concerns, for example, suicide, 
how does that impact an individual's perceptions, an individual's knowledge, beliefs, or attitudes about mental health? So these two things, the attributes of the people and the attributes of the place, is also one of the foremost concepts uh, that we tried to include in the health promotion framework strategy. So because of those uh, three main things, uh, the universal healthcare law was actually a landmark, a milestone, because it put health promotion at the forefront of our campaign for universal health care. It means that there is an emphasis on scaling up health promotion and preventive care. It means increasing health literacy, and most importantly, it provides the mandate for addressing and uh, strategizing on the social determinants of health. While this has not been, uh, well, this is not new. Uh, the healthcare has always been pushing for this. But to have an office, to have a landmark law that says that this is what you should focus on, the SDH, this is what you should show um, results on, uh, I think uh, that is an important um, uh, reform for the Philippines. So with the UHC law, no, uh, the DOH created the Health Promotion Framework Strategy 2030 in 2021. Uh, this provides the framework, the direction and strategies for planning, development, and implementation of all of the health promotion uh, policies, programs, and activities for 2021 up until 2030. It sets the overall direction towards achieving these three goals, that all Filipinos are health literate, that the settings or the places where people are born, live, work, play, and grow old are health enabling. And third, that public policies are supportive and protective of health. How will the HPFS do this? It provides the strategic direction it identifies priority areas for health promotion. It promotes and provides the basis for the technical support and provides the guidance on the roles and participation of the DOH, our regional counterparts, up to the level of our local government units. So in a nutshell, the same as my presentation title, the health promotion framework strategy simply wants to make the healthy behaviors the easier choice for everyone, every time, everywhere. Like to repeat that a second time. When we ask what is health promotion, it means making the healthy behaviors the easier choice for everyone, every time, everywhere. So the implementation approach, priority areas, and action areas support uh, this, this mission. No? So I think similar to what was highlighted by, by the Beijing uh, declaration is that we need to look at the life stages. Implementation should look at the life course approach uh, and the settings-based approach. At the same time, we need to identify priority areas. Sobrang dami po ng programa ng DOH 60 plus. Uh, at nahihirapan din po nung nasa community kami, nahihirapan din po kami i-implement yung lahat ng yun. At the end of the day, the question is, kung gusto kong maging healthy ang community ko, ano po bang dapat kong gawin? So these priority areas help answer that question. Let's focus on behaviors that will uh, synergize to improve the health of the people. So the seven priority areas are diet and physical activity, environmental health, vaccines and immunization, substance use, mental health, sexual and reproductive health, and PA7 violence and injury prevention. And of course, part of our uh, HPFS are the five action areas of our Ottawa Charter. 
if you put them all together, that is the health promotion framework strategy. So what are the key strategies to achieve the three main objectives? No? Um, it's just governance, settings work, and health literacy. For governance, the DOH uh, Health Promotion Bureau outlined what should be the governance mechanism from the national, regional, provincial, component municipality up to the barangay level. What are the initial first steps that we need to put in place? So the first was to transform the previous health promotion and communication service of the DOH into the full-fledged Health Promotion Bureau. At the regional offices, each Center for Health Development or the regional offices of the DOH will have their own health promotion units. At the level of our provinces and cities, what we call our province and citywide health systems, it's mandated that the LGU shall create health promotion committees and establish the similar health promotion units in their provincial and city health offices. For component municipalities, uh, it's the dedicated health education and promotion officers in municipal health offices. This is our recommendation. We all know pagdating po natin sa, sa LGU, kadalasan designate ang ginagawa for health promotion. Meaning, meron akong programang ibang hawak, tapos on top of it ko gagawin yung health promotion. What we are pushing for is that these should be dedicated people. And at the barangay level, to designate barangay health workers as our barangay level health promotion officers. Uh, since before, sila na rin po talaga yung nag implement at nag execute ng three main strategies of the Ottawa Charter, no? to advocate, to mediate, and to enable um, healthy behaviors. The second component, or the second strategy of the HPFS is our healthy settings works. So this means that uh, the Health Promotion Bureau and the DOH shall provide and work with other government agencies uh, and to identify LGUs as health, as healthy communities, learning institutions as healthy schools, and workplaces as healthy workplaces. How do we do this? So when we ask, what is a healthy community? A healthy community is any level of local, any local government that fulfills these two criteria. First is that the physical, social, political, and economic factors that make up the environment of the population are promotive and protective of health. And two, healthcare is accessible and available. So the, the second criterion focuses on what's conventionally in our health facilities. Those are the green boxes. But the nine orange boxes reflect the prerequisites of the Ottawa Charter for health promotion. So this range from potable water and food security, quality education, um, heritage, up until safe, violence-free, and inclusive communities. So since 2021, uh, we've provided support for LGUs or province and citywide health systems, our PCWHS, to implement health promotion interventions by providing them grants financially and providing the technical support to uh, execute the programs. We started with just seven in 2021, 32 in 2022. And this 2023, we plan to expand to 44 more. So what do they implement? They implement our health promotion playbook modules. So these correspond to the seven priority areas earlier mentioned. This 2023, we plan to expand the playbooks to include interventions for more open spaces, for sustainable housing, and for drowning prevention. Our second setting is, is schools. A community cannot be healthy if quality education is not present. 
So what is a healthy learning institution? A healthy learning institution is a, and a school that uh, implements all the six pillars of the health promoting schools. So, so this is aligned with the WHO's framework for um, healthy schools. It fosters health and well-being of not just our learners, but also teaching and not teaching staff. These uh, are the uh, these learning institutions have met the standards to be recognized and awarded as such. So there, for both the healthy communities and the healthy learning institutions, a national technical working group composed of different government agencies have been set up you know, to identify the standards and provide and determine the support and the interventions that need to happen to be able to meet those standards. In terms of our HLIs, we started our pilot last year, 2022, in just nine uh, LGUs, covering 273 last mile elementary schools. What are these last mile elementary schools? Our last mile elementary schools is a deal, is a depth ed concept. No? These are the schools with, I think, around 75% IT population. They have not received grants in three years. Ito po yung, yung hindi, na, na, hindi na bibigyan ng suporta uh, or hindi kasing dami nang nabibigay sa iba. How does the HLI strengthen the involvement of community? No? One, it provides technical and financial assistance to the LGUs through the local school boards and the health promotion committee. Second, it links not just the healthcare uh, offices but also the DepEd school uh, division offices to effectively implement school health programs. And third, provincial health promotion units and DepEd uh, school division offices are our local level champions to coordinate the planning and implementation of the HLI. So this year, we're expanding from 9 to 21 LGUs and covering around additional 600 more LMEs for a total of 900 schools nationwide uh, in 30 LGUs implementing the HLI program. The third setting is our workplaces. And the policy on this is uh, currently for finalization and signing. And these workplaces shall promote and protect the health, safety, and well being of the workforce, including physical work conditions psychosocial health environment, and improving the available personal health resources. The third strategy is health literacy. For health literacy, uh, intervention shall be developed to improve the people's ability to understand uh, health-related information, to appraise them, and to actually apply these uh, decisions to increase health-seeking behaviors. Um, of the upcoming publication of the baseline health literacy assessment is something that we also look forward to sharing with everybody because it's already been conducted to determine the baseline uh, literacy levels. For our health literacy also, uh, we compare filed the, the settings playbooks earlier mentioned. Those are the place-focused interventions, the community playbooks for LGUs based on the seven priority areas with the people-focused playbooks. So the people-focused people -focused playbook focuses on individual behaviors. What would keep individuals healthy? But the place-focused uh, playbook focuses on what modifications to the built environment should we make so that the individual behaviors can be easier to practice. At the end of the day, I'd like to direct everybody to the, to the right side now, to the blue part of this diagram. Focusing on behavior outcomes can synergistically affect different health outcomes. And that is the impact that we want to make for health promotion. So what are our health promotion playbooks, the place-focused playbooks? 
these are all-in-one guides for local government units to implement interventions uh, for uh, health promotion. What does it contain? It contains these nine, com these eight components: your evidence brief, template policy, implementation checklist, basic resource requirements, capacity building requirements, your comp plan, M and E, and FAQs. Why was it structured this way? When we were starting, part of our consultations with LGUs was uh, they were willing to invest, but it's so difficult to start all of these policy bases. Uh, so that's why it's included um, a template uh, policy that LGUs can start with and revise according to their local context. Ito po yung mga pinapasa at hinihiring sa ating mga sangguniang bayan, sangguniang panglalawigan. These policies allocate the resources, the manpower, and the targets no, for uh, implementation of our health promotion playbooks. I'll show two examples for our diet and physical activity priority area. We have the active transport playbook. It guides the establishment of protected bicycle lanes and walking paths to promote cycling, walking, and other forms of active transport. So while we, this allows the practice of minimum public health standards, no, reducing exposure to COVID-19 during, during and after the pandemic, and increasing physical activity to prevent non-communicable diseases. So in a nutshell, it also has the five uh, action areas outlined by the Ottawa Charter. A second example is Karinderia para sa Healthy Pilipinas. Um, it's a service delivery model where we bring the feeding program closer to our communities. Instead of them needing to go to the health center, why can't we tap the Karinderias closer to their homes? Why can't we tap the social capital of mothers who are also equally capable of teaching no of teaching each other teaching their peers on nutrition on healthy food preparation so that's karinderia para sa healthy filipinas it allows uh, karinderias to be mobilized for nutritious food and for dietary supplementation of beneficiaries allows barangay nutrition scholars to focus on nutrition counseling and education. Uh, kung maalala po natin habang nagfi-feeding, ang ginagawa naman po ng mga mami, di ba nagkukumpulan sila. Sayang naman po yung oras na magkakasama sila. Uh, baka po sila ay pwedeng matuto sa isa't isa. So this is what we're thinking of when we think of health promotion interventions. What resources are on top but are already present in our community? And we know that mothers are not just valuable implementers. No? Their voice and their opinions matter, especially to their peers. That's what uh, the Karinderia para sa Healthy Pilipinas uh, tries to do. The health promotion playbooks, uh, eight of them, we have two for the first priority area. No? Uh, diet, that's the Karinderia para sa Healthy Pilipinas. And then physical activity for active transport. The remaining six have one each for a total of health, uh, for a total of eight health promotion playbooks. So what are convergences and ways forward? I'd like to put it according to the three strategies. No? So for governance, I think our medical societies are academic institutions and even allied health uh, courses and practitioners um, can be involved by partnering with LGUs to support, provide support to the health promotion communities. So this HPC is mandate that the LGUs shall create them. The HPC provides guidance to the local health board on matters related to health promotion, particularly on issues concerning the SDH and health risk factors. It's included 
in the Manual of Procedures that representatives must include educational institutions, private sector, and civil society organizations. Second, uh, we need help to expand the body of research for health promotion interventions. So uh, some LGUs are also provided grants by the HPB to implement participatory action researches. So this is more in line with action area on community, you know, strengthening uh, community participation in terms of defining the problems and identifying interventions to solve them. So maybe our academic institutions can help these LGUs. This 2023, we will still continue to give grants for participatory action researches to our LGUs. And of course, our consultations for national policies are always open to our uh, colleagues from the academy. For settings, healthy settings and health literacy, uh, we're hoping that you could support the implementation of the community playbooks in your existing network of partner communities. You may even co-develop or pilot interventions, both for the built environments, for the settings, and for the individual behaviors for literacy. Second is uh, you, you could link with civil society organizations already doing uh, health promotion work, either healthy settings or health literacy. Ang dami po nila. And then link them to our already existing partner communities. So that way, we can pull our resources and expertise uh, to determine what our what are real practical interventions that really promote healthier behaviors. And of course, we will always uh, rely on or you, you know, our, our mentors to help us train the future cadre of health promotion experts, including social and behavior change implementers. So marami po tayong gawin, pero alam po namin na nandiyan kayo para tulungan po kami na magawa ang lahat na ito para sa Healthy Pilipinas. Maraming salamat po. <clears throat> Thank you, Doc Fonsi, for that uh, very comprehensive uh, report no, and sharing of what the Health Promotions Bureau of DOH has been working on especially in health promotions framework and strategy. No? So again, I'm inviting everyone to, you can leave your comments and questions at our chat box there. So, and I will try to recognize uh, your questions and your comments, or you can raise your hand if you want to really, you know, uh, ask your questions directly here at the plenary. No? So you may do that as well. So just try to, Watch out for your raised hands there. Okay. Meron ba? Yes, Glenn, mukhang yeah. meron na siya kanina pa. Ayan. Yeah. Uh, ano, tulungan kita magbasa. Yan, ha? So, sure, yes, Dr. Question, so backtrack ko lang yung mga questions. Thank you so much, Fonsi. Kasi may mga studyante tayo na natetempa ko mag-review questions. Pero mamaya na yan. Okay. Um, question from Jake of St. Luke's. How are Patients, families, communities, population groups actively engaged or involved in prioritizing, planning, and developing, implementing, and mon monitoring, evaluating, and or improving these different health promotion activities. I think he's talking about the process by, by which these were um, done or created. Yeah, so... That's actually a, a good, very good question. Because even if we have the policy, it takes time for uh, it to be implemented and for the LGUs to be capacitated to actually do it. So concretely, uh, the first step is really to have your health promotion committee as mandated by the law. Because that will allow the different sector, sectoral representatives to be there as an advisory body to the health board. The health board in, ter in turn outlines the local investment plans for health. And this means uh, allocates the resources and identifies the interventions that need to be implemented. So we know that there, the decision space there, while we want to widen it, no, there's still a gap. No? How do we really involve the community? That's why there is a complementary 
participatory action research grants provided by the HPB uh, to the LGUs. These SPAR grants are funds to implement um, interventions with the community. Plan the interventions. Actually identify the problem first. Kailangan silang mag-identify ng problema nila and then propose the solution. So right now, those are the two things. Uh, hopefully, we can um, expand uh, the decision space for more participation of the community. Okay. I think uh, my, my question kanina is somewhat related to that question because Doc Fonsi mentioned about health promotions unit at the LGU level. Uh, I'm And I'm curious who are the prescribed members of these committees, if there is any prescription already from the DOH and kaninong office pa sila under? Are they under the, the municipal health office or is this a more interagency type of office under the office of the mayor okay. or governor so, or whatever? So our HPC, the Health Promotion Committee, is an advisory body to the health board. So the health board can either be chaired or it's usually chaired by the local chief executive, either the mayor or the governor, and then co-chaired by your CHO and your PHO. The HPC is a broken line to the kubaga sa org structure niya. It's a broken line because it's it's an advisory body to the health promotion, uh, to the health board, no? Who are its members, no? The HPC's chair is your provincial or city health officer. The members include budget and finance, social welfare and development, local transportation, public info, envi and natural resources, uh, business and licensing, local government operation center, yung LGO po natin sa DILG, uh, trade and industry representatives, educational institutions, private sector and CSOs, and provincial or city DOH office representatives. So actually, we, I could share the, the MOP uh, sure. that is there. Yung, uh, yeah. So that makes it major intersectoral because I yeah. think that's your aim. Yeah, yeah. Yung, yung and, and, I, and I think that's where the, that's the question kanilang tinatanong from St. Luke's. How can the community participate? In this, you know, in, uh, in the more in the decision making space, I think through the health promotions committee or whatever that is, no, na uh, expand yung kanyang membership to be more uh, inclusive of intersectoral representation, no. So maybe that's that's probably the, the answer also to the question earlier. So to my understanding, Ponsi Tama ba, you made this playbook all the all the things you saw policies in terms of health promotion, national DOH national level, yan. Then binabahan niyo si playbook sa LGU level. Kaya siya playbook, they can play around, right? They can prioritize it pa further on what what things they can implement. Kasi hindi naman lahat um, ipapaprioritize nila. So, but number one, sinabi ni Doc Fonsi, dapat ma-create si health, health Promotion Committee, right? So pag pumunta ka sa LGU, dapat ma-point nila yon. But to expectation ba meron or hindi pa lahat? So in your experience, Doc? Alin daw? Yung, yung HPC? Oo. Uh -uh, lahat, lahat na ba ng LGU meron na? So yung mga nauna po, yung mga part po ng uh, universal healthcare integration sites because that's part of their commitment. They will be prioritized in terms of the um, technical and financial assistance but they should comply with the policy. So hindi pa po lahat but it's ongoing yung pagbuo ng lahat ng HPC. Okay. And may sinasabi, parati na may mention ng mga doctors to the barrios na students, yung um, HEPOS, they call yes. it HEPOS, Health, Health Education Program Officer, right? Promo promotions Promotion. Officer. Promotions Officer, Health Education Promotions <laughs> Officer. So there's a HEPO for each LGU. Tapos tama ba na may mga health promotions officer ba sa mga barangay or the barangay health officers are considered Okay. Sa, ngayon, sa ngayon po, um, at the regional level, we have dedicated health promotion units which house the health education and promotion officers. At the LGU level, we recommend na dedicated rin po. Hindi pa rin po kasi lahat meron. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, karamihan sa kanila, designate, may hawak na ibang programa, and then on top of it. 
at the level of uh, barangay, wala po usually. Um, but some uh, some more progressive LGUs, uh, actually up to the level of component, meron sila. Okay, thanks for... So parang hindi natin ma-assume na pag pumunta tayo sa barangay, alam nila kung sino yung okay. promotion officer nila. Okay, thank you for that. Um, there is a comment here or question considering the high prevalence of dental caries. Why is there no oral health in the playbook or oral health playbook? Um, mm -hmm. It's a good point, but maybe I'm not sure. Dr. Fonsi, do you have an answer for this? Yeah, actually, oral health is included in the uh, over 130 um, health uh, celebrations, no? part ng programa. So kasama, wala siyang individual playbook. But it inclu it's included in our uh, communication packages uh, for the implementation of our CHDs and LGUs. Mm -hmm. yes, so it doesn't have its own, but it's covered in our health literacy uh, communication packages. Ayan, nandun naman siya. Okay, hindi lang siya sa priority sa playbook. Um, comment for Dr. Regala. Thank you, Dr. Regala, for the commendable lecture on making healthier choice. The easier choice for everybody. I remember that tagline, tagline kasi sila. Ilang beses pinaulit-ulit niya ni Dr. Ponzi. Right now, fast foods are cheaper and it's easier choice than healthier choices like fruits and vegetables. Maybe a plan to increase taxes on fast foods and subsidies for healthier foods option be implemented for policymakers. And for implementing healthy learning institutions regarding schools, Maybe include gardening in the curriculum in the elementary and high school. This is for deaf ed and to foster physical activity and encourage. Meron yan dati, Doc. Diba? Oh, mga oh, schools, yung, mga gardens. Yung mga gula yan sa paaralan. Paaralan, yeah. <laughs> Tapos oh, bigla makikita mo, tinatayo ano ng building. <laughs> <laughs> May mga kung ano ng monumento nilalagay. Ayan. Tapos um, there's a question here from one of our deans. Medical schools are part of health higher education institution, why is the concentration on the deep deep ed alone? Sige. Uh, yes. Oh, pwede mag-comment muna ako dun sa earlier. Ay, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Oh, dun, 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 dun. So, yung una po, no, yung meron pong nag-grace na, mas mura kasi yung fast food. No? So, actually, we are uh, super uh, in agreement. Um, uh, so the work started uh, 2021. Nagsimula po kami ang naipasa is the elimination of industrial uh, produced trans fatty acids no, in the diets. Uh, we're trying to get uh, more support from our legislators. Uh, meron na rin tayo, di ba yung sa seed tax, yung sugar sweetened uh, yeah. beverages. So yeah. we're, we're, we're trying to push that agenda as long as uh, we get the appropriate support from our legislators. Yung sa healthy learning institutions po, I think, uh, na-mention po kanina yung design thinking. So one of our learnings, kasi tinanong namin to, bakit siya tinanggal? Kasi kasama pa rin naman yung, yung may pa-contest pa nga ng garden sa eskwelahan. Yeah. Ang, ang realization po sa design thinking was, even if they do have it in schools, if at home, walang access to the, to the, to the vegetables. And it's not a practice. Kung mas mura pa rin ang Lucky Me at 3-in-1 na kape, yung pa rin ang bibilhin. So actually, our interventions for food security uh, is one of our major priorities this year. We have a multi-year project to look at the whole food ecosystem. What our uh, nutrition-sensitive and nutrition-specific interventions na pwede natin gawin. Unless mas, uh, it won't uh, affect or it provides an alternative to the livelihoods of people, they won't do it at home. Eh. So we agree that part of it is incorporating it in the everyday of students in school, but also to sustain that link so that the practice can be done at home also. Part of the HLI also in relation to the bakit po ang HEI hindi kasama. So isa po sa anim na partner natin ang uh, ating HEI. So Ang healthy learning institution ay nagsisimula po sa DSWD at uh, uh, DILG, yung mga daycare, and then yung ating pong mga basic education with depth ed primary hanggang sa senior high natin, even our vocational with PESDA, no? yung ating mga TVET, 
and then our uh HEIs with with Chen. Uh medyo kailangan lang din po namin magsimula somewhere. Hindi namin kaya yung buong buong stretch ng buong spectrum, but definitely the work is is continuing. So the MOP for that hopefully we could uh release also uh this year. Yes, and um, you mentioned also about participatory action research. Uh, participatory action research grants. There's a, there are questions here. How can we access participatory research action grants given to LGUs? And another also related to that, can the HPB or the Health Promotion Bureau of DOH work with PASCOM for medical schools to conduct collaborative researches? I understand because sometimes the access to grants or yung parang anong kakaalam lang medyo yung government or public institutions, minsan nalilipt nal out ang mga private or sana medyo fair sa access kung, kung or paano namin malalaman na, uy, may grant pala, how can we access them? Opo, so completely agree. So one of our moves this year is to encourage all our partners to be part of the accredited organizations by the DOH, so, so civil society and private sector partners. That's the first step. We could apply for accreditation. Um, second, since the HPB provides the grants to um, LGUs, I think uh, a, a strategic entry point is to identify po yung ating mga partner communities and to raise awareness nila para ma-include sa kanilang local investment plans for health. Usually po, the, the grants, once it's open, will be relayed by the health promotion unit of the region to the LGU's uh, health offices. So when, once that is open, po, uh, it will be uh, communicated to the LGU's. Um, but right now, the, we want to be able to, to provide grants to our civil society partners as well. That's why the first step is the accreditation. Okay. And do the LGUs re report to you the grants that they release? Do they like, para siyang, di ba, pinibigay ng DOH? Babalik, do they, do they inform you back if ever they release certain grants? So, do you also have access to information kung nakakapag-release sila ng grants? Is there accounting? Doc, it's there, ano? The grant will be used to implement it. They cannot, parang, outsource. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yes, Bian, you're going to ask a question, ba? I was, ask, I was trying to clarify your question. Are you referring, Doc, to the LGU being responsible to liquidate whatever? I mean, um, I mean parang diba they have grants. Accounting. If there's a yeah. grant, kasi diba parang we have to get in touch with the LGU to know if there are research grants. Yeah. So I'm not sure. So LGU level talaga, no? So parang DOH, hindi nyo usually nalalaman kung nakapag-release ng grant si LGU. Tama ba? The LG will not release it, though, because they're the recipient and they will implement it. Okay, okay, all right, understand. Okay, will um another question: Will HPC or Health Promotion Committee be also a component of the Public Health Unit for UHC or Universal Healthcare? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Ah, uh, hindi po siya sa Public Health Unit because it's uh the advisory body to the Health Board. What will be part of the city health office and the provincial health office is the health promotion unit. Nandun po yung mga HEPOs. If I understood right, the public health unit belongs to where in universal health care? Nasa hospitals pa to. Um, for hospitals, uh, we are actually, yung, meron tayong HPU sa LGU. But yes, we do have our PHUs in, in our hospitals. So right now, ang work namin is iba kasi po yung konteksto ng PHU sa hospital. Mm -hmm. So in the hospitals, the work right now is to identify the, the competencies needed, the competency framework to be able to implement health promotion intervention at the setting of a facility. It's actually two-pronged sa hospital po. One, directed towards the healthcare workers and then also to the patients. So hopefully we could have that this year para buo na po yung spectrum natin hanggang sa hospital. Also a comment here related to that. Yes, PHUs are in the hospital. Ang HEPO ay under. PHUs sa hospital. Ayan. 
Um, and um, other questions po, pakilagay lang, but we're time on target. Um, yes, thank you for that clarification daw po. And how do we envision the role of medical schools in assisting the Health Promotion Bureau, knowing for a fact that there is a wide variability in the way we implement health promotion program? Considering din, ano, Fonsi, kasi di ba hindi lahat ng schools are state universities or under state universities or public kasi marami rin sa atin as a private sector and usually diba if you look at the health promotions usually target and LGUs diretso DOH so baka na, na leave out yung ano mga private so maybe medical schools in general how how can we assist diba or maybe help out yun yung question ko i think <laughs> sa last part din ko and how do we participate in health promotions activities Opo. Right now, Doc, I know that our medical schools have existing partner communities. I think that's where we could start. Um, yung usual researches natin, maybe baka pwedeng maisama sa research agenda specific for health promotion intervention. So for example, um, vaccination, uh, what are barriers and enablers to hesitancy? But not just identifying, but actually piloting an intervention based on the formative research. Ang radyo ba effective? Yung poster ba effective? O kailangan lang nila may community group ng mga nanay? Kailangan lang may grupo ng bakuna champions? Um, hoping implementation research for health promotion can be included in research agenda. Second, uh, we could implement the, the current playbooks in our um, partner communities and even pilot po no, as part of the expansion of research. Uh, the third is uh, we could link you with different um, organizations already doing health promotion work, whether it's literacy campaigns or different uh, services, for example, for violence and injury pre prevention and child protection. There are several organizations already doing that. Um, and if, if uh, the universities and the medical schools are interested, we could have a roster of what are these organizations currently doing this work so that the medical schools can select no, depending on the priorities and needs of their uh, partner organizations. Uh, in terms of uh, siguro, I don't know, standardizing how we teach no, or building on the body of knowledge of health promotion curriculum in the country, uh, that is ongoing work right now. Uh, we're still trying to uh, strategize where sana matuloy Institute of Health Promotion uh, that's in the works uh, para po uh, dumami itong ating mga health promotion uh, practitioners dahil wala naman po ang monopoly ng interventions of what will work. Wala ang monopoly sa DOH. Uh, it's in our partners in the community. Seems to be a lot of work you're doing, Ponzi, when it comes to, to health promotion. Yes, we have health promotion in churches. Animate schools can tap them to yeah. for student exposure. Having said and dami ginagawa na opisina ni Ponzi, tama ba na, hindi ko ko na mention ni Ponzi, they just started, when did you start? Kasi hindi siya, hindi siya yeah. dati pang nasa DOH, di ba? It's kind of, it's medyo new office siya sa DOH, right? So, uh, the Health Promotion Bureau started in 2020, literally during the pandemic. Like my first day is March 15. <laughs> I have mag mag anniversary <laughs> <kanu> pala. <laughs> uh, but the Health Promotion and Communication Service has always been there. So kung familiar po kayo, you see Yossi Kadiri, that's Health Promotion and Communication Service. I think that the biggest change for HPCS once it's transformed to HPB, was really the focus on the settings work. The campaigns are not enough. It's not enough na alam nila kung ano yung healthy behaviors. Uh, the focus on the settings is really how can those behaviors be easier to do. And the governance work of the different PWGs for healthy communities and for HLIs uh, crafts that decision space for the different sectoral partners to identify the standards, identify the interventions so that those standards can be met. Okay. 
Lots of points there. So, sana nakuha nila, di ba? Yung mga healthy settings sa ating mas studyante, ano ulit yung mga healthy settings na minensyo ni Doc Ponzi kanina? Ayan, mga review questions yan. Ano yung mga implementation approaches, di ba? Nandiyan yung diba? life cycle stage that tapos na doon si healthy settings. Tapos sa healthy settings, tatlo, tama ba? Healthy communities, healthy schools, and healthy workplaces. Okay. <laughs> and... Tapos yung five, di ba? Yung action strategies, nire-align lang nila sa Ottawa. But they have seven priority areas kung saan nag-revolve ang kanilang playbooks. I understand health promotion is a course or is a, is a module in the DOHE Academy, right, Ponzi? But just in case they would want to invite people in your bureau or you, um, would you could you link us or can you give us a contact maybe email where they can reach you or your bureau ita type po ni Fonsi sa sa ating chat box ang contact number niya at ng ng kanyang bureau habang nagshi-shift ako sa ating mga susunod na slides Okay, Bien, maybe at this point, um, na, na post na ba ni Ponzi ay there. So, Yan. in case you wanted to get in touch with Dr. Regala, his um, email address is arregala Yan. at doh.gov.th or the hpb at doh.gov.th and create hpb at googlegroups.com. Ayan. Yan. Okay. Yeah, but based on the questions and in the interaction, Dr. Cherry, mukhang marami ang gustong makilahok sa health promotions ng gobyerno. And anyway, as community medicine practitioners, yun talaga yung bread and butter natin, health promotions. Eh. Because we are the doctors who are in charge of the social well-being, di ba? Kasi may marami ng mga specialists in charge of physical well-being, mga psychiatrists in charge for the mental well-being, di ba? Eh, sino yung mga doktor na in charge sa social well-being, di ba? Kukumpleto natin yung definition ng health nyo kanina. Eh, tayo yun. We are the specialists of social well-being, di ba? Yes. Sabi, nga ng, sabi nga ng doctor friend ko si Ryan Ginaran, yung specialty daw natin, we are the social oncologists. We treat the cancers of society. That's basically what health promotion is, di ba? That's basically what health promotion is. We are treating the cancers of society. Yun. Yes. So, well, that was, that's very interesting, Doc Fonsi. Marami akong natutunan. At least natuwa ako ngayon sa narinig ko. Kasi as a former municipal health officer, pag nagpapatawag ng meeting ang mga hepos ng province, pagbalik sa munisipyo ko, ang plan nila is to do more bench classes, do more mother's classes, magpaprint ng mga t-shirts. Sabi ko, t-shirt? Anong gagawin sa t-shirt? Diba? Maliban sa susuotin. Parang nakakahon sila sa health literacy lang. Right? Yun yung old understanding ng health promotion. But now, at least DOH now is making it explicit na hindi lang health education, hindi lang health literacy, ang health promotion. So, natuwa ako na may mga tulong kayong binibigay sa mga bike lanes, no? more open spaces, yung mga ganyan. So that, for me, that's really what health promotion is. No? Providing the enabling factors. For us to, sabi nyo nga, make the healthy choices easier. No? And anywhere at any time. Diba? So yun. So nakakatuwa naman. So nakaka-inspire. Yes, um, yes natuwa ako. Uh, uh, and siguro makikita rin sa attendance natin. Sinabi ko kay Fonzie, mga 30 lang ang ine-expect ko. <laughs> tonight but we had um, we reached actually up to 60 plus kanina and I'm happy with the attendance. Dr. Fonsi Regala also posted the link to the different playbooks. So nandyan din siya sa ating chat box. Ngayon bien, let's move on to the last yes. part of our program. Ayan, of course we want to... We will now give the certificate to our guest speaker Dr. Fonsi. I'll just read the certificate here. Uh, of course certificate of appreciation is given to by PASCOM to Dr. Alfonso Miguel R. Regala for his valuable contribution as speaker on the talk on the DOH Health Promotion Framework Strategy 
during the online learning activity, Puso sa Puso sa Health Promotion, PASCOM's Post Valentine's Day Special, held on February 24, 2023, Friday, of course, 5 to 7 p.m., signed, of course, by our President, Dr. Uh, Cherry Bernardo Lazaro, and our Vice President, Dr. Richa Opinatan. So, yun. So, thank you very much. Uh, Doc Fonsi, please accept our appreciation. Yes. Thank um, you so much po. Thank you Sana so po much. Sana po tulungan nyo kami. Marami tayong kailangan gawin para sa Pilipinas. Ayan. Ay. At huwag ka masasawa <laughs> na makakuha ng impression <laughs> yeah. sa amin sa PASCOM. React lang po tayo as we go to the last um, react, last slides. Um, react lang po tayo to show our appreciation to Doc Fonsi Regala. Ayan. So... Thank you so much again for coming to our post-Valentine's special on Puso sa Puso sa health promotion. So napag-usapan po natin ang basic concepts on health promotion as well as the DOH, Health Promotion Framework Strategy. So um, as promised, Dr. Ponzi will give us his slides. <laughs> we distribute po namin yan once available. At if okay po ang ang recording ko this afternoon will also give it to you. So please follow us on Facebook and YouTube. That's the name, Philippine Academic Society of Social and Community Medicine. And thank you once again for attending. And sana ma-celebrate natin ang EDSA Revolution tomorrow today and tomorrow. At sana po maganda ang ating weekend. Maraming salamat po muli sa inyong pagdadot. Thank you so much po. Thank you, everyone. So, yun, Thank any... you. Ayan. May mga last words pa ba? Uh, may mga last na. words. Salamat po sa inyo. Thank you so much. Ayan. Ay, may Ayan. nagtatanong sa akin, private team, may attendance sheet ba na kailangan nalang sign on or something? Um, wala po attendance sheet, but you can plug your message so that we can record yeah. you. Um, yeah. Um, this is a self-directed learning, so hindi po namin siya apply for CTD. But just in case you'd want to request for, you need an attendance for your self-directed learning, sa ating mga doktor, please do just email us. Um, recorded version, will try to, sana po magkumapit sa aking computer mamaya at sana po wala ganong logs. Pero if meron po, um, asking permission to, to Fonzie if I can transport this, um, I think he'll email me if he will be granted the permission. Yeah. Once again, thank you so much. Hindi ko na po nakabate ang lahat, pero salamat po mula sa Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Um, Dr. Fonsi, kahit holiday ngayon, <laughs> pinagtrabaho kita. Maraming salamat. Then, ikaw din at kayo lahat, kahit po nag-holiday tayo, ay pumunta po kayo, sumama sa amin lahat. And we really appreciate that. Thank you so much po. Ayan, we wouldn't hold you anymore. It's dinner time <laughs> and we're time on target. Once again, Bien, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Cherry. Host, thank you so much, our PASCOM officers, our PASCOM members. Thank you. Thank you. Maraming salamat po sa inyo. Thank you. Keep safe. Salamat po. Keep safe po. Ingat. Thank you.